boys and girls. This is Mrs. Davino, continuing our walk around Heritage Park to visit the historical homes. Remember that we've been learning about cultural heritage, which is the way of life left to us by our ancestors. It includes our customs, practices, places, objects, arts, and values. It includes the way you dress, the foods you eat, and the types of celebrations that you have. Today, we're going to begin our tour with the Sidbury House, which was built in 1893 as a rental property by one of the most respected civil leaders in Corpus Christi, Mrs. Charlotte Cook Scott Sidbury. Throughout the early 1900s, she was a rancher, a bank director, and a lumber manager. She had many contributions to the city of Corpus Christi along with her tenant. A tenant is a man who rents a space from you by the name of Mr. Patrick Dunn. Now, Mrs. Sidbury married her first husband, John Wesley Scott in 1948, and she moved to his ranch in Beeville. When he died, she continued to run the ranch until she met her second husband, Edward D. Sidbury. Mr. Sidbury was a wealthy lumber dealer in Corpus Christi who owned many properties. When he died, she continued running his lumber business. With her new wealth, she made a large donation that was used for building the Aransas Pass Railroad. Her renter, Mr. Dunn, rented a small part of Padre Island in the late 1800s for a cattle operation and by 1926, he owned almost all of the island. The Dunn Ranch cattle operation ended in 1971 after they established the Padre Island National Seashore. The Sidbury House is currently home to the Corpus Christi Parks and Recreation Department. There is no official tour, but people are welcome to stroll the property. As you can see, one of the features that has been quite common in a lot of the homes that we've noticed is here. You see that there is a porch all along the second story as well as down below in the first story. And you can see that it's a wraparound porch that it extends to the sides. We discussed before that this was a great way for people to go outside with their friends and their relatives. And it was a great way to meet their neighbors and get to know other people around them. The next home is the Julius Lichtenstein House. In 1874, Moritz Lichtenstein, who's the father of Julius, opened Lichtenstein's department store, which was very well known in downtown Corpus Christi for over 100 years. The original building no longer stands, but the cosmopolitan lofts were built in the same location with architecture similar to the Lichtenstein department store building. The home was originally located on Chaparral Street, but was one of the first homes moved to Heritage Park in 1929. It is described as a modest house with elaborate woodwork around the porches. Elaborate is just a word that means fancy. So you can see some woodwork right up here along the porch which just gives the home a nice uh, feel to it. The most notable feature though, is the large elliptical porch. Again, porches we've said were very common back in that time. This one is in the shape of an ellipse, sort of egg shaped, and it had columns along the front. Again, it was a great place to sit outside after a long day's work and visit with your family and your friends, getting to know each other a little better. Now, this is what they call a drawing room. It has, it kind of juts out or extends out from the porch, and it's got some beautiful windows that rise up to this peak in the roof. This gives it a very distinctive look and makes it appear like quite a grand home. Julius and his wife, Carrie, married in 1902 and they built this home in 1905. And this is the Lawrence house. 
It was the home of Theodore Merchant Buddy Lawrence, who is credited with sending the very first shipment of vegetables from Corpus Christi to San Antonio. Research told me it was about 10 cases of peas. Now, Theodore moved to Corpus Christi from England with his father in 1840. His dad, Dr. David Lawrence, believed that moving to the warm, sunny climate of Corpus Christi would improve the health of his young son. But in 1867, despite his father's efforts to save him, Theodore died in a yellow fever epidemic which killed approximately one third of the population. The Lawrence House is currently home to the Veterans Band of Corpus Christi and there is no official tour provided. Now your assignment this week, boys and girls, is going to be to tell us if you had the chance to live in one of the homes that we have visited in Heritage House, which would you choose? You're gonna write three sentences explaining why you picked the house that you picked. So I'm going to give you a quick little review of the homes that we studied. The first one that we studied today was, of course, the Sidbury House, the Julius Lichtenstein House, and the Lawrence House. Here are the others that we've talked about. The French Galvan House, the Grande Grossman House, the Jalufka Gavados House, the Ward McCampbell House, the Merriman Bobbis House, the Guggenheim House, and the Littles Martin House. As a reminder, if you would like to visit these homes online, you can go to this address, click under Trip Ideas, select Arts and Culture, click the Attractions tab, and select Walking Tour of Heritage House. Have a great week.